Hi, I'm Dr. Steve Sunholm, owner of Equus Veterinary Service in Oregon City, Oregon. I'm here today to talk to you about deworming horses then and now. Many years ago, deworming was to have the vet come out and to worm the horse. So he would mix up a, a concoction of some kind of liquid and pump it into the stomach to get uh, rid of the worms. That changed uh, in the 80s where we had a new product out called ivermectin and you'd actually inject the dewormer into the muscle. Uh, that actually worked very well uh, but it had some complications. Then that was pulled from the market so the injectable went away, we got more of the paste wormers and that's the way we were worming horses. We tried to get into the rotational deworming where you would worm every like six to eight weeks and that seemed to take good care of the, the worm load. Then there was the development of the daily feed through wormers and those was a small dose of the worming uh, every day and that would keep the worm loads down. Uh, most horse owners would try to remember to deworm their horses in, in a timely fashion and the farrier seemed to be the, a good uh, reminder. So every six to eight weeks when the farrier came out, they would think that they, that's the time to worm the horse. Deworming today is a different thinking than we had even you know, three, four years ago. Uh, there's been a resistance problem that has built up in these worms. The worms are getting smarter. Uh, they've been uh, accustomed to having these rotational dewormings and they're not being all killed. So we've created a resistance problem by worming indiscriminately, you know, worming a horse if it doesn't need to be wormed, worming over and over and over again using the same wormer and the worms got used to it. There's uh, sections of the United States where there's some wormers that do not work hardly at all. Uh, Southeast United States has really been hit hard by the, the wormers not working. This is a method of of uh, deworming customized to the horse so that we can kill off the worms that are there or not worm them if they're not there. Another reason to adopt this strategic deworming is that each horse should be treated as an individual. Uh, the horse's immune system is very much a part of how the worms attack and do their damage. The, uh, some horses' immune system are better than others and they don't get the worm loads like uh, the next horse down the line. So let's say that you had um, 10 horses in the pasture. Uh, they're not, you don't treat them all the same. Uh, their feeding habits, how close that they would eat to the roughs, which the rough is where most horses would like to deposit their manure, versus eating in the lawn, which the lawn is the uh, place where they usually graze and horses if they have a choice won't graze in the rough. So if the horse is not picky at where they eat they're going to get bigger worm load. If they're stalled all the time they don't pick up as many worms as a horse in the pasture. So therefore each horse should be treated as an individual because they're all different. Uh, if we can get to where we are worming each horse individually to the point where uh, we might get down to once or twice a year we can be more economical. It's just going to be safer for the horse all around. Be sure to watch part two, Parasites Up Close. For the horse, I'm Dr. Sunholm.